Well, gentlemen, in the last few minutes that we have, uh, let's take a look at, you know, where President Obama, the Obama administration, can make a difference with regard to national security, foreign policy. Last year when we spoke, Tony Aaron, you said that the, President Obama is going to make an, a bid for Israeli-Palestinian peace. And we see his Secretary of State, John Kerry, certainly making a yeoman effort in that regard. Do you see any positive movement in that regard, or what other areas do you see? I would like to see positive uh, movement in that regard. I think Kerry has done a lot to move things in the positive direction. I'm a little concerned about Netanyahu's recent claim that the Palestinians have to first recognize Israel as a Jewish state uh, before things can go further. It seems like another precondition that has been introduced. I mean, I certainly recognize Israel as a Jewish state, but psychologically, historically, I don't think that's going to play out on the Palestinian part. So that, that troubles me. I do see movement, and I think Kerry's going to continue to push it, and who knows? We may see, see some success in that regard. Beyond that, I think if the president were to adopt a different style, something I mentioned before, mm -hmm. and take his case to the United Nations, go to the Security Council himself, work as an integral member of some of these international institutions to which the United States belongs, we could see a difference. And finally, if, and I started with the Pope, if the United States could take this concept of human dignity that has been advanced by the Pope and say, look, this is what America stands for. This is how we are trying to make a positive difference in the international system. If he would do that, a Nobel Prize winner that he is, I think that could have positive success. And I'm going to give you the last word, Ambassador Lagon, and I'm not going to contradict Tony Aaron, but I will say one thing. Uh, as far as the human dignity, President Obama certainly came in with great hope here in the United States and across the world, but his, uh, he has declined his, uh, in, in his popularity in the world, whether in the Middle East. He has not lived up to the speech he gave at Cairo. So there's one thing on the dignity side. He says something, but then doesn't follow through. And then with, reg with regard to the United Nations, the U.S. has gone to the U.N. time and time again over Syria, only to be vetoed by Russia. And then, of course, we go back to the beginning, where Russia is certainly reasserting itself on the world stage. So what are your thoughts with respect to the challenges for the Obama administration uh, in his uh, the second year of his second term? Uh, and how can, uh, how can he, what is he going to President do? President Obama is obviously conflicted about when the United States should step up and take a leadership role for fear of being seen as unilateralists. And it's ironic that in the wake of Afghanistan and Iraq, he has been unwilling to offer leadership where there has been obstruction at the UN Security Council by Russia and China on Syria, but at the same time has pursued so vigorously a drone policy that is seen as one of the most unilateralist uh, actions by the United States, uh, it, you know, in the shadows of, uh, it, you know, the, the, the war on terrorism, uh, taking out enemies and perhaps a bunch of civilians at the same time. I think we need open, transparent, leadership from the United States. And a little bit more of what we've seen as a success in Asia of working with democratic and reforming allies on trade, prosperity, and stability in places like uh, the South China Sea is the kind of confident leadership role we need to see more in other parts of the world from the Obama administration.